He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the beggar from the ash heap to set them among princes and make them inherit the throne of glory. 1 Samuel 2, 8a We are a people called by God to positively impact and influence our generation. We are a living spring to a thirsty world, a place where imperfect people find true joy, genuine friendship, and practical truth for living from the Bible. In the preceding year, we run through a troop. We were confronted with challenges of a lifetime. Our resolve in God was tested. However, this year, we are leaping over walls. God is bringing His promises to pass. We are transitioning from divine acceleration to a season of divine upliftment. What the enemy meant for evil, God is turning around for good. There will be divine upliftment in our church, families, careers, financial status, jobs, and in every aspect of our lives. God is lifting us to a level we never envisioned. We will no longer operate in the valley. There will be divine upliftment, a place where eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of men. God is divinely lifting you to a place where you are a success, not a failure, a place where you are a victor, not a victim, a winner, not a loser, a place where you are not sinking, but soaring, a place where you are not defeated, but destined to rise higher. Because of the favor of God, protocols will be broken for your upliftment. You are ripened to enjoy divine recognition. You will rise above your equals. 2021, our season of divine upliftment. Get ready for the Word of God as we welcome our senior pastor, Reverend Kingsley Ayesu. We would like to welcome all those who have joined us uh, by way of the internet, our cyber audience, both members and our visitors. We are glad you joined us today. We believe that God has a river word for somebody, and uh, I want you to stay tuned in. And uh, we would want to encourage you to write notes and uh, do what is necessary uh, to make sure that you would be able to remember the things that we are teaching. Amen. Amen. Um, um, to the ushers, I think we have some space on this side. I realize you are struggling with, please, uh, we have some space on this side. And uh, um, uh, let's, let's keep social distancing. Uh, let's not just, just get too crowded. A place. Amen. 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 First Samuel chapter 2 verse 8. And then we'll read First Samuel chapter 1 verse 8 through 20. We have a little bit of reading to do this morning. But I'm doing that because I want to keep things in context for you. First Samuel 2 8. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the beggar from the ash heap to set them among princes. Shall we all read it together, please? The poor from the dust and lift the beggar from the ash heap to set them among princes. Amen. There are people who can lift you out of the ashes and that's all they can do. But God lifts you out of the ashes so he can set you up. Are you understanding what we're saying? All right, First Samuel chapter 1, verse 8. First Samuel chapter 1. Then Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? And why is your heart grieved? Am I not better, better to you than ten sons? Let's keep going. So Hannah arose after they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, you don't want to miss next week. We are just going to address that little phrase. Then she made a vow. O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maid servant and remember me and not forget your maid servant but will give 
your maid servant a male child then i will give him to the lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head and if it and it happened as she continued praying before the lord that eli washed her mouth now hannah spoke in her heart only her lips moved but her voice was not heard therefore eli thought she was drunk so Eli said to her, how long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered and said, no, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Do not consider your maid servant a wicked woman, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief, I have spoken until now. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition, which you have asked of him. And she said, Let your maid servant find favor in your sight. So the woman went. See, it's interesting. I. We are going to have so much fun this year. See, she prayed to God. The man of God said, may God grant you what you have prayed for. But when she's leaving, the man of God, he said, I hope I find favor in your sight. Hey. So the woman went her way and ate. And her face was no longer sad. She doesn't have the baby, but she has prayed. <laughs> the devil is a liar. The baby is not here, but she went home. She ate, and Bible says she was no longer sad. Why? Because she prayed. Then they, arose, they rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to their house at Ramah and Elkanah knew Hannah his wife. Pay attention to that phrase. And the Lord remembered her. And it came to pass in the process of time <laughs> that Hannah conceived and bore a son and called his name Samuel saying because I have asked for him from the Lord. Father, we thank you for your presence here. Have your way in Jesus' mighty name. I need help. Help me to help somebody in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. We are continuing with part two. Talking about divine upliftment. Amen. Divine, and listen to me. Listen, this message today is for you. This is, this is custom made. It is tailored for, for you. <laughs> Last week we were talking about, about purpose. All right? Just a little recap for those of you who were not here. I encourage you to please uh, you can go to Facebook, go to YouTube, go to our website and, 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 and listen to the message. But you have to understand that there are a lot of people who are walking through life without a real assignment of a designated purpose in life. It is like high school students trying to figure out what their major in college is going to be. And I told you last week that when you are 17, 18, 19, 20, it's okay. When you hit 40, 45, 50, you're still figuring out you're in trouble. And people are trying to figure out, so we do not have the accomplishment and the fulfillment of purpose that we need in life. And so you have doctors who are still not happy. You have lawyers who are still not happy. You have people with PhD and still sad. And there are people who don't have any letters after their names and they are so happy you will believe it. I, 
want, I want you to, to stay with, with, with me today. Because, I mean, I know that there are people who say I'm controversial. I don't know if I'm controversial. I just want you to, you, you know, Muslims go to the mosque and they take off their shoes. Christians come to church and some of us, we take off our brains. Listen, I don't want you to put your brains aside when you come here. I want you to think. So, you see, the Bible says the people of Berean, they were more honorable than the rest. Why? Because he said, after we have taught them the word of God, when they went home, they searched the word for themselves. And that is what makes you honorable. So please, I, when I say things here, go research it for yourself. Read the Bible, analyze it critically, think it through, and make sure that what I, make, I said makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, forget it. Because as we get older, Pastor Prince, we begin to wonder, did I do what I was created to do? Did my life matter for anything? Did I do what I was sent here to do? Listen, our God is a calculated God, a God of methodology. God has a system and a method and a plan. Think, listen, he is not a haphazard God. See, God has a plan and God has a strategy. So we have to ask, how do I fit into that plan? All right? Now, when God shut the womb of Hannah, there was an intentionality behind it. God had a purpose for doing that. Okay. There is nothing worse than being placed or positioned in a place for which you were not called. It is frustrating. It is depressing. And listen, you will fight everybody. And the problem is not everybody. You are in the wrong place. It is like the little boy who went to this game with this uh, baseball game with his father and wanted to go use the bathroom. And his father said he would go with him. He said, Daddy, I'm old enough. I can do it. My father said, Daddy said, Okay, go and come. The guy went and came back with a sullen face. Very, very, very straight face. And Daddy said, Did you go to the bathroom? He said, Yes. Did you pee? He said, yes. He said, then why is your face so straight? He said, daddy, there were women in the men's bathroom. The little rascal went to the women's room and he's complaining that the women... Listen. What, what... When you are in the wrong place, you think everybody else is wrong. But I don't have time today. I don't have to. I have to move very fast. Pastor, yes, Bible says that <laughs> she went to church and she prayed. All right, and believed God for a miracle. Now. We talked about provocation last week. And I promised you I'm going to pick every one of these topics and deal with them on one Sunday. Just one each. Because I left you with a question last Sunday. Is it possible that we would not have had Samuel without the provocations of Penina? Penina was mean-spirited. Penina was, was, she, she was, she, she was as mean as a junkyard dog. Because she teased Hannah. She provoked Hannah. We will come into church and she always had a way to provoke this woman for what she doesn't have. And, and, and you see, and, and I told you last Sunday that we would think, oh, it's Hannah, it's happening in Shallow, but it happens in church today. And then we'll, we'll have the order. When people now leave because of our provocation, we have the order to say, ah, if they were true Christians, they would have stayed. No, you are mean. But the, 
the sad thing is the mean one seemed to be receiving the blessings and she was popping babies like popcorn and the one who is in love with God is struggling and sometimes so full, it doesn't make sense and because we are human we begin to think that just because we are enjoying the blessings uh, that God is loving us and God is hating this one who is struggling but what you don't understand is that a struggle and a pain was uh, for a purpose and for a reason and God hasn't forgotten her and God hasn't given up on her and God is not upset with her and God is not angry with her God has a purpose God is looking for a prophet she is looking for a son and the two are going to come together and something supernatural is going to happen But Bible said, after can we just talk? After she prayed, she went home. And I'm speaking, I'm skipping a lot of things because I'm reserving them for a good day. But Bible said she went home. And there's a little phrase. Bible said, and Elkanah knew Hannah. for the sake of she was intimate with her husband now, now stay with me stay with me I'm thinking if it was going to be a supernatural and divine move then we don't need man Because it was God who was going to do it. Am I right? Listen, if you don't get anything we are teaching this year, let me help you with something. Supernatural is a word that we use when we're defining upliftment, right? It is two words, super and natural. So there is a natural element to your upliftment and there is a super element to your upliftment either one by itself will never work and that is the problem with the church especially the black church we have limited everything to the spirit everything is spiritual everything is spiritual so we are very prayerful but we are prayerfully I had one man that I respect with all my heart and, and I had just a portion of the thing. So I cannot judge him because he's a great man. He's done a lot for the African continent. He's, he's, he's one of my mentors. He mentors me from a distance. I respect him. I heard this thing and I'm going to talk about it. But like I said, please, the thing was yanked out. Just a piece of it was put on Facebook. So I don't know the whole context of it. But I know he's a smart, intelligent guy and I know what people are putting out there is not necessarily what he probably meant. And the statement is this, that prayer is not in the success equation. And people have, and sometimes when I hear some of these things, eh? It's in the revelation equation. Thank you. Now, people have taken this Yanked it out of context. And sometimes when I hear some of these things, you know the one I really enjoy? The people who write the comments underneath it. It tells you how stupid they are. No, no, I'm not even kidding you. I enjoy that one more than the statement that people make. Listen. And again, please stay with me. Stay with me. We will have to define what we mean by success. Are we talking about success in the, in the framework of what Hollywood defines as success or we are talking about success in the framework of what God says success is? Because if we are talking about what God defines success to be, then I put it to you that prayer is an element in the success equation. It has its place. Are you still okay? 
But the problem with the black church today is that we have made prayer the only element in the equation. And so we'll go to all night, half night, quarter night, full night. Divine encounter. Miracle. Miracle night, yes. Breakthrough encounters. The healing crusade. And, and the whole week, the whole week, the university student is sitting at prayer meetings. There is something seriously wrong up here. Now, don't get me wrong. Babu says that after Hannah had prayed, she went home and did the needful. You know, there's a problem today in the body of Christ. There are people who like an idea, the idea of something, but does not want to do what is required and the responsibility associated with that idea. Thank you for those of you who clap. So there are women who like the idea of being married but don't want to do what married women do. I dare you to say amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to be missus but don't ask me to cook. Don't ask me to clean. And at night, you better don't even come near me. But I want to be missus. So we have men who want the idea of being the head but do not want to accept the responsibility that comes with being the head of the family. So I am married but I still want to keep my singles card and my bachelor's card. So don't ask me, when are you going to be home? I will come when I'm, I'm ready. When, I, when you see me, you will see me. My brother, you better stay single because once you say I do, somebody is going to ask you, when are you coming back? She went home and she said to Alkana, tonight it's going to be on. There is a sequence to the upliftment and we have to walk you through it so you don't become a lopsided Christian. Please give me John chapter 1 verse 17. Are you, are you doing? Are you doing okay? Hey, I warned you. I gave you a disclaimer at the beginning of the year. So please. says in John 1 17, they'll get to it. Bible says, but, and the law came through Moses but truth and grace came through Jesus. The law came through who? Moses. But truth and grace came through who? Let me help you. Listen. Grace is unmerited, undeserved favor. That is what Christ did for us on Calvary. That is what brings us salvation. You, you don't have to pay, it's free. But Jesus Christ did not only bring grace. The Bible said he brought truth. There are two sides to this Messiah. There is the person of Jesus Christ, which is grace. And then there is the principles of Jesus Christ, which is truth. Listen, you cannot just address one and forget the other and expect your upliftment. It won't happen. So when Hannah went home, Babu said, and Alkana knew Hannah. It was only then, Babu said, after and God remembered. What did God remember? The prayer she prayed. So if Hannah had gone to bed that night. And Elkanah comes to see her and said, if you do... 
I know how you all do it. If you don't learn some shifting cultivation tonight, I will break something. But the same person, it's not, no, no, it's not about praying for a baby. The same person is believing God for a breakthrough. And I'll address it. This year, I will stay on this alone. Bible said, after she prayed and she was leaving, and the man of God said, God, where are you? He said, if I have found favor in your sight, you need favor with men and with God if you are going to make it in life. There are some of you, I promise you, you are so gifted and so talented. The reason you have not seen the success in life is because you don't have the right connections with the right people. Because maybe you are like Peninda, you are mean spirited. You can't have friends and friends can't have you. But let me tell you something. Listen, there is somebody who knows where your breakthrough is. There are things we have to do, man of God. Oh, I believe in prayer. If you, if you are in this church, you know I believe in prayer. Oh, I pray. Oh, I love to pray. I love to pray. But the prayer meeting must come to an end. So, listen. Okay. Many years ago, I made a statement in this church and I, I heard all kinds of things about it. You know, so once upon a time when I was young, these things used to bother me. Today, right now, so I don't need to impress you anymore. Once upon a time, I thought if I impress you, you will stay. I've realized I can impress you all you want. If you want to leave, listen, people talk about you go to leadership church, leadership things, and say, oh, shut the back door. Listen, you can shut the back door all you want. They will create a hole in the wall and leave <laughs> if they want to leave. <clears throat> no, no, they are good principles, so we do them. We, we shut it, but uh, no, please. So I have taken a vow to tell you the truth. If you love truth, you will come back. If you want to be light, please, it's okay, go. Let somebody keep lying to you. That you don't have to work hard. Once you give him that $500, you will go into your account and he can pull money out of some federal reserve and put it in your account. Believe such nonsense. Does God perform miracles? Absolutely. He's a miracle working God. He performed miracles, yes. But there's a place for miracles and there's a place for hard work. And you cannot substitute each other for the other. You can't say, oh, as for me, I'm prayerful. So God, once I have prayed, Hannah prayed. Hannah had an extended prayer meeting. When the prayer meeting was over, she stayed and continued. But when she went home, Bible said, and Elkanah knew Hannah, and God remembered her. May God remember you. Oh, come on, sir. I said, may God remember you. See, but we'll, 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 we'll see. See, the whole thing. <laughs> see, Pastor Enoch, the whole thing about purpose is this, see. The thing about purpose is that when you're a person of purpose, okay, you are often misunderstood. Yeah. And people say you are this, uh, you are that, and you are this, and you are. people misunderstood you. you. You are not crazy. You are just a person of purpose. You say, where did you get that from? Eli looks at Hannah and says, what is wrong with you? Why are you still drinking? Put away your drunkenness. I don't, I mean, I don't know. I mean, like, besides, what gives Eli 
the moral right to question Hannah even if she was drinking. Yes, he's the high priest. I get it. But Eli, can we go to your house? Can we talk about Hophni, Hophni and Phinehas? Your sons. Before you come to talk about my house, can we talk about yours? I dare you to say amen. It is, it is funny how there are people who know everything about the problem in your home and how you can fix it, but they don't seem to have a clue about what is happening in their own home. They know everything about your husband, but never know anything about their husband. They know everything about your wife. And everything. They know everything about your children, but nothing about their own children. If you paid enough time to your own marriage, as you pay to other people's marriages, maybe. You know, sometimes, sometimes people come to sit with me in the office, Master. Couples struggling. Maybe the man has committed. You know, adultery or woman has committed adultery or whatever it is. And every time they sit and I listen to the whole, the first question I'm asking is, what is happening in the house? And the person who has been cheated on gets upset all the time. Not all the time. Pastor, what do you mean? Are you trying to say something happening in my house that it is his responsibility? He made a choice. No, no, no. It doesn't matter. If we don't fix what is happening in that house, you can marry seven times. Every one of them will do the same thing they did to you. You're, you all have to make me stay to my notes. If I don't stay to my notes, that's when I talk all this. <laughs> Holy Spirit. <laughs> See. Sister Tracy, listen, listen, listen. I told you, me, I told you, I will tell you the truth. Whether it, it affects me naked positively, I don't, but I'll tell you the truth. Because if you refuse to sleep with that man, somebody will sleep with him for you. man of God. Aren't you a woman of God? Didn't your mama tell you that it's part of the prescription for being married? Somebody shaking their head, Pastor King. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 We have to teach you to do the needful, the necessary, because the Holy Ghost is not going to do that for you. It is after you have done that, then prayer works. Then prayer works. Prayer doesn't work by isolation. Prayer works. Faith without works is useless. It is dead. So the Apostle Paul was not mistaken. He said, you want to tell me how much faith you have? Show me by your works. Hannah, you want a baby? Let Elkanah know you. But pastor, are you teaching people to cheat? No, no, no. No, that's not the point. I'm telling you that there are things that we need to do. And until we do what is needful, we will struggle in life. So you cannot go to work and be the prayer warrior and go sit at your desk. Yay, this is my year of upliftment. You will fall so badly, you will never even remember how you, 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 you fell. Because you were there for eight hours to work. You are being paid to work. Please, that is not the time for prayer.
when we leave Shiloh and we come to Rama, it's action. Just do it. I told you, I told you this word is for you. Don't look at your neighbor. It, it's you. <laughs> See, when, 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 you are, when you are a person of purpose and you, you, El kind of looks at her and, and El kind of thinks that she was drunk. You know? Something I, I, I teach in other places, not here. Because people would think you are giving them the, the license to, you know, do certain things. But I just want to. Okay. I'll leave it alone. Maybe at our adult <laughs> education, I'll teach it. But you see, some of us have been through things that have shook us and, and we keep on keeping on and we keep on going until we answer our critics with success. Because when purpose is calling you, your Eli cannot understand. So if Eli cannot understand, how can Elkanah understand? And that is why I keep telling you, listen, stop trying to explain yourself to people. They won't understand you. And by the way, you are not on trial. Stop defending yourself. <laughs> I said, stop defending yourself. You are not on trial. And by the way, by the way, you have a lawyer. Let him speak for you. Because ain't nobody going to understand you. Da. You can explain yourself all you want. And by the way, by the way, by the way, the people you are explaining yourself to, listen, they've already made their conclusion on the matter. Your enemies will never believe your explanation. And your true friends will not require one from you. So stop explaining. She looks at the prophet and says, man of God, I'm not drunk. As a matter of fact, I haven't been drinking. I so, is it possible? <laughs> Mama Terry said I should leave it alone, so I'll leave that one alone. <laughs> but you see, <laughs> and he looks at the man of God and says, no, I'm not drunk. I'm just a woman with issues. And I have looked around. My husband loves me, but he can't help me. What do you do? What do you do, pastor? When the man is so in love with you, but can't help you. When the woman is so in love with you, I can't understand what is driving you. It's purpose. And sometimes the thing is killing you and you keep pushing on. It's purpose. It's purpose. And the person lying on the same bed with you can't understand. And sometimes, let me help you, sometimes you yourself, you don't even understand. All of 
these things were going on. And Hannah goes home. And she does what is needful. And afterwards, Bible says, and God remembered her. And you, you see, when you read it like that, you would think and assume that her miracle was instantaneous. But we'll talk about that another day. Bible said, in the process of time, purpose takes time. So, so let's say a man has begun a business and he's working it and he's working it and he's working it. If you don't have a woman who understands your purpose and your calling and you are staying late at that job and you are working it because it's a new business and it's just you and you are working it and you are working hours and hours and hours. Come home, come home. Every man is home by now. No, I'm building a business and this is the season of investment. Once it is established, there will be time when I will be home 8, 24 hours. You will ask me to go to work. But for now, it's the season of investing. If you don't have a woman that understands purpose like that, you are in trouble. Are you the only one who has started business? People are doing multi-million businesses. Even they cry, they go home. And not just the men who pass a prince. Maybe the woman has started some saloon business that just got the shop and people are coming and coming in and she's now trying to build her clientele and she's staying late. You come home and cook. You better find some frozen food and eat. No, pastor, are you saying my wife shouldn't cook? No. I say you must understand that purpose is calling her. And in this season she's in, she needs to spend extra hours building that business. Because there's a place for work and there's a place for prayer. There's a place where Elkanah must know Hannah and there's a place where Hannah must stay and pray extra prayer. So I'm going to wrap up. And then we'll pray. Hallelujah. Pastor, it is all of this. See, I'm taking a lot of time. I haven't, you know, I haven't even come to our text for the year. I'm taking a lot of time to build because all of these things happened before Hannah made that statement. Please, take me to 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse number 8. Because it was the purpose the pain, the provocation, and all of that before the praise came in. And Bible says, please give me the text, 2.8. 1 Samuel 2.8. This is part of Hannah's praise report. She said, he raises the poor from the dust and lifts the beggar from the ash heap to set them among princes. It was after some of the things I'm sharing with you this month that she came and made that conclusion that I have seen a God who is able to lift up a poor man. He raises the poor from the dust. And lift the beggar from the ash heap. Why? To set them among princes. God will elevate you. I said God will elevate. We will have divine elevation. But there are certain things that need to be in proper perspective. So we are going to do what Hannah did. We are going to pray. I don't know what it is you are believing God for. 
I don't know where you want to be lifted up. I don't know where you want to see the glory of God in your life. It may be in your finances. It may be in your relationship. It may be in your marriage. Maybe it may be in your family. Maybe your children. We are going to pray. But please, after we finish the prayer, when you go home, Elkanah, no Hannah. This is the end, I believe. Your 